Go ahead. Do you need something, sir? <laughs> You're just trying me not to look at you while you take a picture. <laughs> Hi, James. <laughs> Pretty good. I'm ready. All right, everyone, if you'd like to come up, we are about to speak with an incredible artist and storyteller, um, Michelle Gagne. <laughs> so hi, how are you doing, man? Thanks Pretty for, good. Thanks for coming up and speaking with us. So you. Um, are you enjoying the show so far? Yes, yes, it's, uh, it's fun. It's uh, great. So um, what have you seen so far? What have I seen? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people with uh, <laughs> costumes and uh, people walking around. And, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, for you guys that don't know, um, Michelle has quite a few projects that he's worked on. He's, you've worked for Disney. You've worked for. I started for Don Bluth in 1986 Don, yeah. on an American Tale. That was my the first project I worked on. Actually, the first feature I worked first on. Feature. First feature film, and I've got about uh, 25 feature films in. 25 now? Yeah, about 25 behind my belt. Are you working on any particular films right now? I'm doing a feature film right now. I'm actually uh, directing uh, a feature film based on my uh, graphic novel, The Saga of Rex. Saga of Rex, really? Yes. Yes. Awesome. It's being turned into a feature film and pretty excited about it. So, um, tell the people about Saga, Saga of Rex. Yes. How did that? Well, that character came out in 1997, actually. Um, I created a, the character for a children's book that I did in 1999. The, the, the book came out in 1998, and it's called A Search for Meaning, The Story of Rex. And, um, but, what was it? It was probably a, 10 years later, uh, Kazu Kibuyushi, who was doing the flight anthology, came to me at a convention and he said, hey, Michelle, I'd love to have you do something for the flight anthology and I said well I, I have this character I created like years ago called Rex and I have this idea for this graphic novel uh, with him and uh, would it be okay if I serialize my graphic novel within the flight anthology and uh, that's what we did. that's what we did so for six volumes of flight I did one chapter of the saga of Rex once all the chapters were done uh, image comics uh, picked up the uh, you know, did the, the printing for the graphic novel. And uh, once the graphic novel was done, I, um, I uh, did a Kickstarter to, uh, for one minute to show um, what, the, what a film of the graphic novel would look like. So I did a, uh, I set the goal at 15,000, and I said I, for 15,000 I would do one minute of animation to show what the feature film would look like. And uh, I ended up raising 60000 so I did four minutes and uh, put it on YouTube. And uh, then the next thing I knew, I was negotiating the uh, feature film rights with a Belgium company. And now we've been, uh, I've been working on other projects, other movies and video games while we were doing the screenplay and setting things up for the production. And uh, on September 4th, I started full-time on the Sega Rex, so now I'm not going to stop until the feature film is done. So. Yeah. Is there an expected time of when you're hoping to have well, the feature film out? We're targeting to have the film completed by the end of 2020. Uh, that's that's our hope. Just, just 2020. Just the when it did the end of 2020, probably December, like towards the end of the year. Oh, <clears throat> Yeah, it's, uh, we've changed the model, like uh, <clears throat> initially I was going to have a team of storyboard artists uh, work with me to storyboard the whole film and, uh, uh, you know, it just uh, it financially was not viable for me to get the people that I wanted, so I ended up making a deal that I would storyboard the entire film myself. So uh, the company is giving me 14 months to do the, all the storyboards and the animatic uh, for the film myself so in, in a way that's a good thing because it will allow me to do a much more visionary movie and exactly the kind of film that I want to make uh, um, so is the film going to be um, is it going to be an original story is it going to be based yes on it's, well, it's based on my graphic novel but the graphic novel when we broke down the graphic novel we realized there was about 40 minutes of material for for a film and uh, 
And for distribution purposes, the, uh, the company Great Animation, which is the company that's backing the feature, said we needed to have 70 minutes for a film so we could get distribution in Europe and so on. So uh, we went through a couple of writers and then we finally um, uh, got somebody from Denmark who's a, a really good screenwriter and I worked with him for almost uh, over a year to uh, get the screenplay that I wanted. I mean, it was, it was tough because Saga Rex is, uh, it's a visual symphony, there's no dialogue, there's no narration, it's music for, from start to finish, and all the animation is synchronized on music, uh, like Fantasia, and it's, you know, it doesn't have any uh, stupid sidekick characters, and, you know, it doesn't, it's very artsy, it's an author films, but I wanted to have the level of quality that a Disney film would have, but with the artsiness that they would never do, you know, so, uh, so it's been like, tricky. Like the French do. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, I think Europe is a good, uh, is a good place for me to make a movie because uh, the way they operate, they operate a lot with uh, uh, subsidies, tax subsidies, and they have all these, uh, I, I mean, I don't really know how it works. They've kind of explained it to me a little bit, but it's, everything is through tax incentive and stuff. And uh, so we, I'm allowed to do a lot more of what I really want to do because it's not so focused on trying to get a blockbuster that's going to make 150 million. So for me, I, you know, I, I want to make a work of art. I want to leave a legacy to animation. I've been working with other directors for years and years and years and, and you know, I've been making my own short films and now it's, the time has come for me to, uh, to do my feature film. I, I did my video game a few years ago, which I got that out of my system and now I want to make my feature film. So do you have, do you have any other projects that you're working on right now besides uh, the Well, you know, I'm, I'm finishing up some freelance that I had committed to like about a year ago. So I have to get all my freelance out of the way. I'm, I'm literally full-time on Sega Rex. I'm just trying to get all the freelance out of the way now. I just, uh, uh, I finished, um, while we were doing the screenplay and finalizing that, I was doing uh, a lot of different projects. Like I did the uh, My Little Pony, the movie. Uh, I was the effects designer on the film and uh, did uh, all the magical effects, uh, most of the magical effects for the film. Uh, I, I was the VFX director on Battleborn for Gearbox. Uh, and you know, I did some a bit of freelance for uh, League of Legends, uh, and now I'm. I have one more. I have 56 hours left on one freelance job, and then I'm 100% full time on Psycho Rex until the film is completed. So I want to know what inspired you to do the saga of Rex? Like, I, I you know, it's kind of like. Uh, I don't know, why do people go to the bathroom? It's kind of like an urge. <laughs> it's an urge, you know, it's, it's like a curse. But, well, it's, you know, it's just, uh, you know, when you work in the movies for so long too, it's like, uh, you feel like it's time for you to make your own movie. And, and you know, I, I've worked on movies where the directors, I'm like, looking at these directors, I'm like, I can do better than that. Man, I have, I have more vision than that. So it's, I feel the time is ready and you know, I'm 52 years old now. It's, I can't wait any longer. You know, it's like, okay, I, I gotta start making movies. I, I've got at least three movies I wanna make. So I gotta, I gotta get going with the first one, so. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, so are there, just real quick to the audience out there, does anyone have a question for Michelle? Come on, come on, don't be shy. Don't be shy. You can do it. What, what you got? What video game were you working on? Uh, what video game? Uh, you know, the, my video game is called Insane, Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet. And it's, uh, it was a, a kind of an indie game, but it ended up, we ended up getting financing from Microsoft to do it. Uh, but uh, Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet was uh, the same kind of thing where, um, do, do I have time to tell a little story? How much time do we have that? Okay. So uh, what happened is I did a uh, lecture uh, at a company in Seattle. Uh, they were doing some video game work for Midway. And uh, I did this workshop with the team, with the effects team for a day. Then the next day I got an email from the head of effects um, 
Joe Olson, and he said, have you ever thought of doing a video game? And I said, well, you know, I never really thought about it, but let's, let's have lunch and let's talk about it. So we went and had lunch in uh, Seattle, and we started getting excited about doing a video game. I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I told him, I said, I don't really play video games anymore, but I have fond memories of playing all these side scrollers and stuff. And I said, but I, you know, and I'd love to do like a really ambitious side scroller, but do people still play side scrollers? Because I really yes, didn't know. Yes, and then they, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, side scrollers are still big. And he said, you, you should not concern yourself of what the industry wants. Do what you want to do. So I said, okay. I said, like, this is the kind of video games I would want to do. And then so finally we're talking and I went home and I started doing a bunch of artwork and concept for the game and sent it to Joe and Joe is doing some prototyping and showing me like how it would look in motion and stuff. And then so finally I, uh, I called Joe and I said, Joe, okay, I, I want you to go into your boss's office right now and like resign your position. Uh, and I mean, this guy was head of effects to it, surreal. And I said, resign your position, quit your job, and we go full time, and we do this game. And uh, he called me like uh, about 6.30, he said, you won't believe what I just did, I just quit my job so we could do this. So it took five years to do the game. And we, uh, you know, I mean, it sucked us, <laughs> it sucked all our <laughs> savings out. But you know, we ended up being able to raise a million point five to do the game eventually by pitching and pitching for years and doing prototype. So we were able to do the, the game that we wanted and uh, we, uh, the game came out and we got the uh, British Academy Award and the Annie Award for Best uh, Animated Game of the Year, which the Annie Award had been nominated, uh, I think five or six times before for films like Iron Giant and so on. And uh, it took me going independent and making my own video game to get it. So it was, it was pretty exciting. So we, um, and you know, after I did like uh, uh, Insane and Twisted Shadow Planet, everybody's like, oh, so what's gonna be your next game and stuff. But then I had already moved away from games and I was doing other things, so. But, but then I came back to games and I did uh, Battleborn. Uh, I was a VFX director on that. And that, how that happened is I, uh, it was the same kind of thing again. I, they called me up to do an FX workshop and I went on site and um, uh, I said like, I, I'll do a workshop for a day and keep me on for a week. And I'll work with, I'll just sit down with the effects team on the floor and I'll work in production. And I, I really had no idea what I was gonna do. I said, you know, I just wanna work with the team and see, what, see what's gonna come out of it. So, uh, so I do my workshop on the Monday and then the rest of the week I'm with the team sitting there. Nobody knows me, everybody's like, this is, you know, that's so weird to have this guy like <laughs> working with us probably. I'm mean, probably wondering what I'm doing there. But uh, to make a long story short, uh, three months later, I'm the VFX director on Battlepoint. And suddenly it's like, I've taken over, <laughs> kind of thing, you know? So, so it was, uh, you know, we did some tests while I was there for that first week. We, uh, it, was a, it was a 2D game. And I said, have you ever thought of doing all the effects uh, you know, it was a 3D game, and I said, have you ever thought of doing all the effects in 2D? Even though it's a 3D game, we could design, I mean, with 2D we have so much more control over how we can design the effects and get some nice design. So, uh, so we did some tests that first week, and everybody was really into So when I got back home, they said, yeah, we really like the test you did. Can you, can you stay and do some freelance for us? So we, I just kept freelancing for a few months like that, and doing more tests and more tests, and eventually they brought brought me back in for two weeks and then so I got there and then they, you know, I, I get to Gearbox and then they, uh, they, they bring me upstairs with the CFO and they said, okay, we want, we want you to be the VFX director and, and, and do this. So it's kind of like, uh, just, I mean, it came out of nowhere kind of thing. So, so I spent like over a year uh, working with Gearbox on, um, uh, and then I left and I, I went and, uh, after that, I worked on uh, Spider-Man, the Miles Morales Spider-Man that's coming out. So I was uh, four months on that, uh, and then I did little, My Little Pony, and now I, I finished that. And I, those were my commitments, and then after, now it's Rex. Now yeah, it's Rex. Do you, so do you, do you like working on video games better or movies? Uh, or is it all the same? About the same. Yeah, it's, it, I love the creativity. So for me, it's like whatever, you know, I mean, I kind of, the way that I ended up in video games is very, I, I, I didn't know how to even break into that industry. I was very anchored in the movie industry. And um, 
I mean, my first video game job was actually, it's funny because when I was at Gearbox, I'm like, you know, you guys are all like veterans of the video games industry. I've only been working in, you know, I've only been doing stuff for video games for nine years. They're like, nine years? You've been working longer in video games than all of us. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I guess, I guess it's all a matter of perspective. <laughs> so, but, but anyway, so I, I started, I got the, um, uh, an email from Disney Interactive uh, Group, I think they were called, and uh, so I designed the, uh, all the characters and locations for a game that never actually happened. Uh, so that was my first, and then I did like uh, another game for Sony, which never happened either. It was all... I hear it, that happens a lot. Yeah, it was all designing characters and stuff, and then... Uh, so I was mostly, before uh, my own game and before Gearbox, my expertise in game was mostly designing characters in some location. Uh, I did, uh, there was a game called Dark Spore, and I did some uh, character designs and location designs for that. But I had never really gone down to the nitty gritty of making a game. So once I did Shadow Planet, that was, we were, I really got into the actual production of a game and, and how it works. and all the achievements and you know everything and all the all the stuff that people complain about now i understand you know I, once we released shadow planet i was getting emails every day like hey i'm not getting my achievements and what's wrong I'm like, well, you know so it's like you know there's so many things that i understand now that i had no clue when i started so it was interesting so does anyone else have a question we've got time for about one more no no questions come on all right, well, if you don't have any questions for him, oh, here we go. Okay, perfect. The man with the awesome shirt. <laughs> so, uh, have, um, is, uh, is Rex a uh, complete saga now, or do you have an idea, have thoughts on more stirrings of one? Well, uh, Rex, uh, uh, yeah, Rex is the, we have everything locked into a screenplay. It's, we, I, I actually have the first version of the animatic now, which is, uh, so the whole score is stamped from start to finish, mm -hmm. and it's all correlated to the screenplay. So, uh, so it's pretty much locked how how Rex is going to be. It's too bad, you know. I, I was going to say like, uh, hey, you guys should all come to my booth and look at the Rex uh, uh, graphic novel, but mm -hmm. uh, I sold out this morning. So. Oh, you did? Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. I don't have any more copies. So. Sorry, but come and look at my other books, though. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. so. So yeah, definitely everyone make sure you go check out Michelle at his table. Which 106. 106. Plus, booth 106. Make sure you go check him out. And I want to thank you so much for coming okay. up and talking with us. I appreciate right. it so much. Hey, and you. yeah, that was Michelle Gagne. Make sure you guys make sure you go check him out. Hey, you don't have to applaud. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Alright, so we're gonna take a brief intermission. We're gonna come back with a awesome panel with four awesome women, and it's called Ladies of Literature 2, because it's the second one, and she's got the power. So make sure you're back here for that at 12.20. Otherwise, while you're waiting for that panel to happen, everyone should take a moment, head on over to Fingers Duke, and get yourself one of these awesome Jet City Comic Show shirts, all right? They're right over there against the window, it's Fingers Dukes, all right, guys? We'll see you in a little bit. <laughs>